Buggity, buggity, buggity! Let's go racing, boys! Dale Jarrett. The first lap of those first 10. Yeah, this is a, the track is just treacherous right now, Larry. It's slick. Uh, I, this is one of my big concerns. If I was a driver down there tonight, I'd be yeah, saying 10 laps. Backs. I think a very cold tire with a very slick racetrack. Darrell, you said in these first laps, turn three would be Hold the your line, turn. that's what I was doing. Let's see what happens. The UPS Ford. Oh, that Come looks there. like may have gotten the same contact there from Robbie Gordon. Robbie Gordon. Seven. Uh, you heard Dale say he dove, or his spotter say he dove under you. Dick Bergman. When the formal portion of today's drivers meeting ended, Mark Martin stood and addressed his fellow drivers and reminded them that this tire doesn't really get going for five or six laps and to take it very, very easy for those first few laps. He also asked the crew chiefs to issue that same reminder. NASCAR's David Hoots echoed that same comment and uh, we got to be careful tonight on new tires. Robbie Gordon changed engines after practice, had to start this race from the rear. First caution of the day is out. Dale Earnhardt Jr., he has moved up to the 24th position. We didn't get to see it that lap because he pulled to the inside of Terry Labonte in the 44. But the last five laps down in three and four, he has been right up against the wall. Right behind him, his teammate Martin Truex Jr. saw him do it. He moved all the way up against the wall, and both of them been making some ground up since they did that. Martin ran that high line last night in the Bush race. And uh, he, I think he must have shared that with Dale Jr. because he was running in three and four where they are now, right up next to the outside wall. You see him there. And now in one and two, it doesn't seem to be quite as effective. You run to kind of the lower. But we're talking about the racetrack. I just want to get this in here real quick. This racetrack was built in 1960. It was repaved in 1973. It was repaved again in 1979. Car in the wall, turn one. Tony. Tony. Stewart. And and caution will wave for the second time today. I tell you, that poor guy can't catch a break. Darrell, the car climbed the hill and eased into the wall. It wasn't a particularly hard hit. I don't know, Mike. That right front's damaged pretty good, and I saw the brake rotors and parts flying everywhere. That thing crashed hard on that right side, and there's a guy that's already hurt. And there's definitely a right front tire down, and we don't know if that happened when he hit the wall. We'll have to maybe look at a replay and it'll tell us. But we were about four or five laps from those green flag stops. And Mike, this 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 situation right here could be what NASCAR was worried about. We're right on the window of a pit stop. We're right on the window of where these tires maybe could give a problem. We don't know, but what is Matt? Matt, what do you know? DW, they're taking the car to the garage. Tony just came on the radio and says we cut a right front tire tough break for this team. They've climbed up to second in the championship standings. And like you mentioned, it's just been a tough, tough speed weeks here in Charlotte. It's been a couple of, it's been really about two or three really rough weeks when you think about back to Talladega and the Bush race and a couple of accidents he's had here. Well, we know you're entering turn one, even in race configuration, right at 190 miles per hour. So that's a hard lick off into that turn. And you can see that they're working diligently here with Tony, uh, already injured from that crash last night, or shaken up, I should say. Stewart hit hard last night in the Bush Series race as Greg Zipadelli. That's a concern crew right on. there. Jimmy Maycart, Greg Zipadelli, they're all looking uh, really closely at what's going on. And here. you're right, Darrell, this was a pretty hard hit, but let's look at the one last night in that metallic red car ah, right there. Gosh, and you can see what they did to that race car. It just destroyed it. Dill it just delicately getting up out of the car. And there's still a question, did he cut a tire last night or did something break on that race? And now? this is just the worst place that tire could let go, right down into turn one, still just rolled out of the throttle when it took off. In driver introductions, riding around the track, Stewart 
was uh, favoring that right side. He was not moving his right arm. He was holding it stiffly, pointed downward at the ground uh, to avoid any more strain on, on his ribcage, shoulder, and arm. You can only take so many licks. Look. And Mike, I asked crew chief Robbie Reiser that very question earlier this afternoon, and he said, you know, we may have an edge, but we've had our share of bad pit stops. I said, have you guys done anything at all to prepare for these additional pit stops? He said, Steve, if they're not in shape now, they won't be. He said, I told them just to keep their routine the same. By the way, he said Matt Kenseth was not happy at all before the race with his race car, but he said, we've got all night to work on it. Talked to Matt. He said, man, my Bush car was perfect last night, and uh, my Cup car, not anywhere near that good. He lost an engine in the Bush car. Otherwise, oh, might well have won four, that Turn four, guys. I got a car around. It's Ryan, Ryan Newman. Newman. Who has not been very good since they dropped the green flag. You're good. Didn't hit anything, man. Didn't hit nothing. What do you, what I was coming about 10 car lengths behind you, but you're clear. He's on the inside. Crank it up. We're clear, man. Didn't touch nothing. For Newman having that spin, what a job to keep that car off the wall. Yeah, he's got a right front tire down. He doesn't want to get too fast here. He can't get lapped, but he uh, left both front tires are down. Don't want to tear the fenders off his thing or your night's done. Well, Daryl, I know one thing that I did learn there in about those eight laps after that restart, at least for eight laps, which is just about a third of the run. Two tires looks pretty good, like Riggs and Mayfield changed on that last stop. See what happened. Yeah, Ryan, calamity corner. How many cars, I can't even count them, have spun off a of turn four? And he's just so fortunate. So was Paul Menard to miss that. Cars in the grass. Michael Waltrip took the low road. See where Mikey goes here. Yikes. Front of you, right front of you. Stay low, stay low. Good job. We Good just job. went down pit road. I'll, I'll go this way. I don't know what that commitment cone weighs at the end of the pit road, but when you hit it 150 miles an hour, that could be could have been big. And it's been beat to death yeah, over these last two it. weeks. The Coca-Cola 600 on Fox is sponsored by Coca-Cola and my Coke Rewards, where you can collect points and earn NASCAR gear straight from pit road. Earlier today at Indianapolis, Roger Penske had one car crash and one go to victory lane. That scenario has begun to repeat itself here in Charlotte. Kurt Busch coming off turn two has crashed and put us under caution for the fourth time. Watch the Miller Lite number two. Just snaps around. Just, that's just what this tire seems to do. Just like his teammate Ryan Newman on the last caution, just different end of the racetrack. Difference, Kurt Busch slaps the wall pretty hard in the two. Seems like when you tighten the car up to where the driver has a pretty good feel in the wheel, they want to snap loose then. And the left front of that car is pretty well destroyed. Man, big pieces flying off of there. And Kurt has taken it straight to the garage. And I'm going to tell you what, the clock is ticking for this two car. I know we still, it's a long way to Richmond, but he don't have any more mulligans left if he wants to make the chase for the next Dale Cup. Right this now. year comes in here 18th in points. Crash turn four, Brian Vickers. He tickled the wall up there earlier in the race, and now he has knocked the right front off the car. Caution right. flag number nine. Right front tire not even turning. All that cheap. Sorry, guys. He's had a rough couple of weeks. Uh, if you go back to Darlington two weeks ago, our last points race. Hey, right, look at that right front tire. It's all cradled up under there, and it's just not even turning. Former Bush Series champion. And getting loose right there. He just starts getting out from under him. See Ryan Newman. Okay, which way is he going to go? Slowing down. Ryan's had to dodge a lot of bullets tonight. That's exactly where Ryan Newman spun earlier, but Ryan Vickers won't be quite as lucky as Ryan Newman was. Get the smoke. Carl Edwards in the 99. Tony Raines in the 96 car. In fact, we'll ride with Tony Raines. From Tony Raines, DLP on board camp. 
She's been about 13 laps again. Uh, I'd say she'll be a busy place. Pit Road, that is. Pit Road. The, it's the gas station. Matt? How about our singular virtual crew chief question? Will Jimmy Johnson win tonight? Oh, oh, wreck, trouble. Wreck. Big Kyle Bush. Bush. A lot of cars. Casey Mears, the 42 car. He's going to spin. He hit the wall real hard, Larry. 42 did, 5 did. A lot of damage to that 42 car. A lot of damage to that 5 car. Kyle Busch spun and hit the wall a ton. That car He's is okay. Definitely crashed. He's got the window net down. That's a signal to the track workers that he is all right. But his night's over. Rowdy Bush has done rowdy on down. Remember, Kyle came in here seventh in the next Dell Cup points. Watch Casey Kane. 42 just wiggles a little bit. Gets into the five, turns him to the outside wall. You see back there, Jimmy Johnson, the 48 car, just almost locking it down, coming to a stop. Casey Kane does a great job right here. Doesn't panic, lets him go, gases, lets. Good job. Ready to leave. So not a lot of apparent damage to Mirror's car, but when he caught Kyle Busch, it turned Kyle hard into the outside wall. He's okay. Quite a bit of damage to the back of that 42 car. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know he's upset, but the picture showed Casey Mears just got loose. Casey was not trying yeah, to hit him. No, no, not at all. And I think when Kyle goes back and watches the replay, he'll realize that, you know, nothing was done intentional by Casey Mears. But look at the rear spoiler on Mears number 42. It's standing straight up as a result of that crash damage. That can't be good. Casey and his crew chief, or excuse me, Kyle Bush and his crew chief have been invited to have a discussion in the uh, Oval Office. That's the next Cell Cup officials trailer after the race. Yeah, Rick, uh, Mr. Hendrick may have to join his young driver there. I don't blame him for being frustrated at being out of the race, but as we've discussed, I think his anger was perhaps misdirected. And now Carl Edwards gives up the lead to come to the pits. Now, I feel pretty safe. These guys making a stop right here. They can make it to the end. It's those guys that pitted on 358, 359. They could be in trouble. The 10 cars troubles continues. Took equipment away from his pit box. He'll have to come back in for at least a pass through. I would say his night as far as winning this race, Dick Bergman, is done. Yeah. Jeff Gordon's in the wall, third four. Caution is out too. That could be a break for the 10 car right there. Because now his penalty possibly tail into the longest line. Jeff Gordon's car looks a lot like Brian Vickers did when it did the same thing in the same place. Something, you see the right front tire, something broke on that race car. He, he had a problem coming on pit road. He slowed for a few laps. There was a little problem when they went in there and put the new tires on. Now he's broken something underneath there. Jeff Gordon came in here six in the next Hell Cup standings. He won't leave here in that see spot. See it smoking, smoking, and uh, all of a sudden, other guys, I don't know what happened there. And Darrell, remember, we just had reported he'd been complaining about his brakes for about the last 20 or 25 laps. Something definitely broke that time. Maybe even broke a brake rotor. Looks like a suspension part to me. I mean, uh, the way the tires kicked out there. Thought like the uh, A-frame collapsed or something. Now, let me tell you who else this could be a big break for, because I'm telling you, he was not going to be able to make it without stopping again. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. I feel like he's going to have to come to pit road. Pit road's closed right now, but he's going to have to come to pit road, but at least it will put him on the same cycle as everyone. That's right, because he and J.J. Yaley came in two or three laps earlier than any of the other leaders. At lap 355 with 45 laps to go.